Hey, good morning. Welcome. Those who are here, those who are online. I think my mom's watching online, so it's always nice to say hi to my mom. Um, so our, we have, today's a family Sunday. We have our friends who are kindergarten through fifth grade in the room. Hopefully when they came in, they got a note-taking page. Um, kids, if, I'll give you, there's some verses to fill in the blanks. There's a, a, a statement to fill in the blanks. There's some, uh, uh, like a word search and a thing to color on the back. There's a question to think about that I'm gonna ask all us to think about today. And, and I would love to see your note-taking page after the service if you're willing to share it with me. Um, but hopefully that's there. The reason we do Family Sundays, we have many reasons. One is we think it's really important at times to have intergenerational worship and, and other things we do as a church to be intergenerational. Um, it, it's very intentional. One of the things that it serves and allows is we have in our kids' ministry in K through fifth grade, uh, leaders that serve every week as small group leaders and uh, programming, do, leading kids worship. And so to give them uh, a week where they can take a, a break from that, but, th but the real goal is not that. It's intergenerational worship. We think it's important that we worship together and that they see us in here and what it looks like. We're modeling for them, and, and we think it's true in a lot of different areas. So it's Christmas time. Is it safe to say that now? Like, like I, I, uh, I, I actually fear for my life at times with some of the uh, people saying, look, you've caused real strife in our house. Like, this is, be careful what you say about when a tree can go up. And I'm just saying, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to say, you can celebrate Jesus any day. And for me, like, I get into Christmas, so I start early. That's my deal. You do you, I'll do me, but Christmas is a big deal for me. I get into it, and I'm very, very intentional about it. And we're in this series called Christmas on Purpose, celebrating the fact that Jesus showed up on purpose to bring purpose to everyone and everything. This was not a random, casual thing. And so for me, during this season, I try to do Christmas on purpose, and I want to challenge you to do the same thing because in, in the next month, Lots of things are going to get thrown at you, things you have to do, things that you get to do, things that, that just, it's stuff to do. Like it just, the list and the calendar fills up. And in the midst of all of this busyness, we can miss an opportunity to reflect. As a matter of fact, like I'm a big fan of, of Christmas carols. And uh, but it's not just because I love Christmas. I just think like Hark the Herald Angels Sing, I think is one of the most beautiful gospel rich hymns uh, that there is. And I've instructed Clay that when I die, I want it played at my funeral. And if it's not played, Clay, I will come back and haunt you. <laughs> Ghost of Christmas of Doug Pass is going to come and show up at your house. Like, like I just, I love it because it tells the story of Jesus. You know, God with flesh appearing and born that man no more should die. Uh, it's just such a rich, and I encourage you this time of year, especially always when you're singing songs about worship. Uh, worshipful songs like during times but always especially at Christmas time listen to the words don't just get into like a Christmas karaoke mode or a worship karaoke mode or oh I love this song like think about the words because worship when we when we're singing we're making a statement about how we feel or how God wants us or who God is. Like, think about it. Be thoughtful and reflective. So, so I want to challenge you to do Christmas on purpose. Like, I try to do it. Like, I have a plan. I had to do that for a lot of things. I have plans for everything. But like, at Christmas, and I've talked about this before, I have the 12 Dugs of Christmas. I do every year. There are 12 things, at least, that I'm going to do. And some of them are the same every year. I read A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens every year. This year, I'm taking a college class from Hillsdale's College about it, so I'm really excited. Like, I get into this book. I read it every year. That's one of my, I do it every year to think about, you know, how Ebenezer, this life of, 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 that's changed uh, from, from miserly to someone who does Christmas well and loves others well. I, I love it. Uh, Christmas lights in the house, of course. Uh, you know, there, there's things I do every year. Some of them are others-focused, like, and, and, out there. Some of them are secret. Like, I don't tell anybody what they are. Like, that's just like me. But what I'm saying is, you don't have to have the 12 whatevers of Christmas. Just do something on purpose that helps you lean in to what the truth is about this life-changing, eternity-changing eternity moment in history. And, and lean into celebrating it well. Uh, one of the things I do every year is I ring the Salvation Army uh, red kettle bell on Christmas Eve. Here's the deal. They're not doing it on Christmas Eve this year because it's on a Sunday. 
And we have Christmas Eve services that day. We have three services in the morning and one at night. We're encouraging everyone to go to the morning services. But for those of us, there are several of us that are going to do an unplugged kind of scale down service that night. And so in between, I should have been ringing the bell for the Salvation Army. So they're messing with one of the 12 Dugs of Christmas. And as Clay just heard, don't mess with my traditions. Like, like, like hark the herald angels sing. Like, it's big. Like, so here's what I'm going to do. We, we actually have a red kettle out here, and we have one in the kids' area too. So we encourage you to drop change and money in there this way. Like, so Christmas Eve, I'm going to ring the bell here at Christmas Eve services, uh, three in the morning that night. So that way I can keep the tradition. And, 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 and me and the Salvation Army don't have to go to battle. Like, like I don't, I don't want to challenge them on their convictions, but don't, don't change up my traditions. So, 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 if, if, so bring some change or money to drop in there all, all Christmas season, but I'll be doing that Christmas season. All that to say, like, I do Christmas on purpose. What are you purposefully doing during the next month to, to focus on Jesus, reflect on him, to do Christmas well, to, to, to uh, invest and serve and love others well. So a big part for me is I have a nativity scene in my house, in my yard, and it's very, very special to me. It's one of those light up Christmas. I'll show you a picture in a minute, but but there's a very unusual piece of that, and some of you already know what it is. There's an un- unusual player in, in most of my nativity scenes. Years ago, Jennifer and I went to Disney World, and they had this back lot. It was they had bought this Christmas tree. I mean, it was a whole block just of lights everywhere. It was. Even for me as a Christmas person, it was almost too much. Uh, it was everywhere. And in the middle of it, they had this nativity scene. And I thought, isn't that great that Disney's kind of has, you know, the nativity scene here and, and the lights were everywhere. And I, and I love nativity scenes. And so, so I decided I'm going to come back the next morning and get a picture of it. So I come back the next morning to get a picture of it. And there it is in the daylight. So you can see it better. And, and which is which great to me because w- when the darkness was gone and it was just light, all you could see was the nativity scene. You couldn't really see the other lights. But here's the problem. Standing next to it, posing for pictures, was the blue Power Ranger. (laughs) And I had so many questions about this. (laughs) When did Disney acquire the Power Rangers? I knew they got Star Wars and Marvel. They're getting everything. But at this point, they owned the Power Rangers. And secondly, like, 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 kid, like the real star is over there in the manger. Like, like we're, we're like the point of Christmas is right over there. Like that's what we should be posing for pictures next to. And, and so for me, this is mine. You can see I've got a little blue Power Ranger in my front lawn nativity thing, standing back there. And 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 it's there for me. It's there to remind me these two things. We can miss Jesus due to all the distractions. And so that reminds me, with everything going on, even the Christmas lights on my house could be a distraction. How much I love Christmas could be a distraction from focusing on Jesus. The second thing is this. It reminds me of this. The original gathering of people at the birth of Jesus seemed random. It did. It seemed random, but it wasn't. The thing is, it seems normal to us. For instance, I'd ask you, and it's okay to talk in church, who was at the original scene at the birth of Jesus, nativity? Like, who who were the players? Who was there? Wise men, shepherds. Angel, what? Mary and Joseph. Animals. Jesus, thank you. Like, I feel bad that Jesus was last on the list, but like we get it. Like I said, who was at the birth of Jesus? So of course he was there. So, so all, the, all of that seems perfectly normal to us. But think about it. This was random. Like why are there barn animals at the birth of a child? Why were shepherds there? That was not on their plan. That day. But the angel said, no, you need to see this. The the wise men, who probably didn't get there the same day, they probably came later, maybe at their house, I know. So if you want to put your wise men across the room, like they're on their way to to Bethlehem, like, that's fine. I I put them all in there together, but I've got a blue Power Ranger. So, like, 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 why in the world would foreign astronomy people, why would they show up? Why Mary? This was not on her plans yet to have a family. And all of a sudden, God says, nope, surprise. And Joseph says, surprise? (laughs) No one's more surprised than me. And he was probably saying, why me? This seems like a normal group of people that belong together. This was random. And what I want you to know in the things in your life right now, that feel like this is random and chaotic and it's disrupting everything. 
This reminds us that Jesus shows up in the middle of that. Jesus shows up on purpose. This was not an accident thing. This was planned. And Jesus showed up on purpose to bring purpose to everyone and everything. Everybody, maybe aside from the animals, but I'll include them. I'm an animal guy. Everyone there at the birth of Jesus walked away with a sense of purpose. Shepherds, they went and told the village. Wise men, they went and told. Mary and Joseph, like everyone walked away from this. It went from random and chaos to there's purpose. And it all is found in Jesus. And that's what really what we're going to talk about this month in this series of, of Christmas for those of us that are in here. Because a lot of us are dying to figure out how do we make sense of what's going on? How do I make sense of this purpose? Joseph was just like that. If you have a Bible, turn to Matthew chapter one. And, and Joseph finds out that Mary's about to be, have a child and he's confused and everything's disrupted. He doesn't know how to make sense of it. So in Matthew one, we get this thing with Joseph where the, he finds out this is not random. This is not chaotic. It's on purpose. But after he had considered this, so he's trying to make sense of it. You may be trying to make sense of things going on in your life. You go, it makes no sense. I see no purpose in this. He tried himself to do the math and make it make sense, and it didn't. Then God shows up and brings purpose. An angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. God is doing something here, and you're invited. It caused fear and pain and confusion. It seemed random, chaotic, and messy, but Jesus showed up on purpose, and he brought purpose to Joseph's life. And he says, here's what's happening. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save the people from his sins. The word Jesus is the Hebrew name Joshua, and it means Jehovah saves, God saves. So, so Jesus is given this name at birth. Here's what we want you to call him because he's showing up on purpose, with purpose. There's something he's here to do. He's here to save his people, his people from their sins. In the messiness of our sin, Jesus shows up with that purpose in mind to save the people from their sins. Then he's given another name. Jesus had a ton of nicknames. So all this took place to fulfill, and if you're filling along on the kids' note-taking page, all these yellow words underlined are, are, note, are, are on the note-taking page to fill in. Gave him the name Jesus. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Somebody 700 years earlier said, oh yeah, when the Messiah is born, when God shows up on purpose to save, this is what's gonna happen. And he quotes uh, an Old Testament verse, Isaiah 7, 14. 700 years earlier, this was written. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. 700 years earlier, it said, hey, this is what's gonna happen. And you're to give him the name Jesus. So is Emmanuel a middle name? Like, like is it Jesus Emmanuel? Like, I, like what, what, what is it? He had lots of nicknames. Do you have any nicknames, by the way, like in your life? Anyone have a nickname? Like it's not what you're, yeah, like most, many of us do. And for those who are asleep, you know, that didn't raise your hand. Um, like like I, I've got, like I think I'm, I'm close to like 40 something nicknames now. Like here's some of mine. My name is Douglas Allen Holcomb. Uh, but I'm also known as Doug, Dougie, Dougie Fresh, Dig Doug, Doug Bug, Slug Bug, Doug the Thug, Doug the Slug, Lassie Lass, Pastor Doug, PD, Chappy Chap, Chappus Maximus, Charlie Buckets, D, D, H, the D, H, the Godfather, Doug, uh, or Dog, Doug number one, the Dog Father, Church Master, Skip, Sebastian, Josephus, Hulk, the Incredible Hulk, Talcum, Talcum Powder, Doug Alita, Snuggy Dougie, Dougie, or Snuggy, Snuggless, Dad, Daddy, Papa, and Little Bubba. Like those are all, and I, that's not even all of them. But like, I've acquired a lot of nicknames. Did anyone have any clear close to that many nicknames? You have a nickname? All right. Does anyone else have a nickname? What's yours? SJ. SJ? That's a nice nickname. What's yours? Rosie? That's a nice one. Anybody else? Last one. Yeah. 
What is it? Jabin. All right. Again, like nicknames happen. Jesus got a lot of them. And a lot of times our nicknames are tied to something about us. Something we did or something we rhyme with. Hence, Doug the Slug. Like, like, like it just happens. Jesus gets these nicknames. Not, not to give him something else to call him. Not so on, on in elementary school when they're calling Rolf on the first day, he's like, actually, yeah, but if you could call me Emmanuel, I'd appreciate it. No, no, like, all these nicknames were given to tell us what his purpose was. Why he showed up on purpose to bring purpose. Why did Jesus show up? To save the people from their sins. That was his purpose. So what's your purpose? To let him do that. It, it's Emmanuel, God with us. That's his nickname. What does that nickname mean for him? He's supposed to be with, with us. He is. Because he showed up then, because he forgave our sins, and he shows up in our life through the Holy Spirit. The most frequent promise given throughout the Bible, more than any other, is I will be with you. And he could not keep that nickname of God with us and that promise if he didn't do the first one of saving his people from their sins. But that's his purpose. So what's your purpose? To be with him. I'm, I, I need to practice the presence of God to, to live like it's true and believe he's with me. And all th these are just two of his nicknames, but he's got more. As a matter of fact, this was quoting, this in Matthew 1 was correct, quoting this verse. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Jesus was given nicknames, and these names were given as a sign. There were these predictions, these prophecies that said, this is how you're gonna know God really is with you. This is how you know that it's the Messiah, that God's keeping his promise. Again, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and call him Emmanuel. So there's a pretty big prophecy there. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And the word prophecy, it's a message from God of either a godly truth, like repent, you're going the wrong direction. We don't always lean into those as much with fascination as we do with the future promise. Sometimes future promises only make sense in reverse. Because we think about with all this going on, how in the world do people miss the birth of Jesus? Hence the blue power ranger, remind me, you can miss it. You can have all these predictions, all these 700 years earlier, prediction, prediction, prediction. This is how you're gonna know. And, and these were some of the predictions about the birth of Jesus, these prophecies. Born of a woman, isn't that all of us? That kind of makes sense, right? Like that doesn't feel like that's a prediction. But remember, this is God with us. This is not God coming down from heaven. This is God born of a woman, fully God, fully man. That's a unique promise. Born of a virgin, that's a unique promise. Be the son of God, Psalm 2-7. These are all Old Testament, hundreds of years earlier. And Jesus checks all these boxes. Be, he'll be the son of God. So he backs that up by his actions. And his finale is the best of all, rising from the dead. Be the son of God. Descended from Abraham. So he had to have the line, family tree that his great, 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 and a lot more greats grandfather needed to be Abraham. Because there was a promise given to Abraham that all people will be blessed through him, through his family. There's that one, Genesis twenty-two eighteen. 18. Descended from the house of David, as in David and Goliath, as in David, that, that the Lord is my shepherd. He needed to be descended from the house of David, and it's already told us in Matthew 1 that he is. As a matter of fact, Matthew 1 starts with a family tree, and you're like, this doesn't feel important. It was extremely important because the Messiah had to check a lot of boxes. And that prediction was made in Jeremiah 23, 5 and other places. To be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was a little city, an insignificant city. Has a few splashes of showing up in the Old Testament. But really, to be born in Bethlehem, no, Jerusalem is where you'd be born. If you're going to be the king of the Jews. But no, it's predicted in Micah 5, 2. That he would be presented with gifts. That he would be presented with gifts. So that happens when the wise men show up and, and what, what they brought to him. And be threatened by Herod. That was predicted. All these things are there. There's eight predictions. There's more. Not just about his birth, but about his whole life. There's more. But let's just take these eight. And the question is, what are the odds of Jesus fulfilling eight of the numerous prophecies in the Old Testament? Like, what are the odds? Like, if you flip a coin, that would mean one and two, right? It's 50-50, one or the other. It's much bigger than that. And, and the thing is, most of those, Jesus could not control those to make them true for himself. He could not make the, the shepherd show up. He couldn't control where he was born. Like, 
Jesus shows up and all these boxes are checked that he, does, he is who he says he is. What are the odds of Jesus or any one person fulfilling these promises? One in 10 to the 17th power, not one in 10. One in 10 with 17 zeros behind it. I don't even know the word for that mathematically. You've got 100, 100,000, and you've got 100 million, 100 billion, 100 trillion. What's after that? A gazillion, I feel like. <laughs> like, that's just one out of eight of those. That's what mathematicians have kind of come to the conclusion of. Then when you add in all the prophecies listed, uh, you know, in, in, about his life that he fulfilled, None were left unfulfilled except the ones about his second coming. What are the odds? Nobody, nobody could have made this happen without divine intervention. God with us. That's how we know we can trust who he is and, and when he's born, but also who he says he is later. And that's what we're going to focus on the rest of this series is Jesus said, I have come for this purpose. We want to understand his purpose and understand how it can bring purpose to our life in the midst of chaos and what seems to be randomness. Here's another nickname. He's got, he's got a ton of them. Isaiah 9, 6. Again, 700 years earlier. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, meaning he's in charge, even when it feels like he's not. And he will be called. So add these to your nickname list, Jesus. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, Everlasting Father, bless you, Prince of Peace. Four more nicknames about his purpose. This is who he is and what he will do in your life. The purpose he'll play and the purpose he'll give you. So let's look at each of these. And kids on the kids note-taking page, it's got these fill in the blank. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor. I loved it on the, on the bridge or the refrain, whatever you call it, of that song. Like we were singing these phrases. We were singing these earlier. That's why I want you to be thoughtful about what we're seeing. Wonderful counselor. The thing is, in the randomness of life, it's hard to find your way. It's hard to find purpose. It's hard to make sense of it. Some of us have experienced things in life that have caused significant grief or trauma or hurt or pain. And sometimes we don't know how to make sense of it. And then Jesus shows up on purpose to bring purpose. He says, I want to be your wonderful counselor. I want to counsel you on how to move forward in life. I want to counsel you on how to grieve and make sense of your pain in light of who Jesus is and his eternity. I want to counsel you on, on what it means to be in relationship with me. That maybe you're in a place in life where you just need help. And Jesus shows up as the wonderful counselor. Maybe that's what you need in your life right now. The next one, mighty God. This was not just great teacher, mighty teacher, powerful teacher. This was mighty God. Walk on the water, feed 5,000 with a happy meal. Crucified and rises from the dead. Heals the deaf, heals the blind. There should be no doubt he is mighty God. And there are things in your life that you're hoping you can just get through or you can get over it. And the thing is, you can't do it alone. There are things you'll experience in life that are bigger than you, but they're never bigger than him because he is a mighty God. Maybe that's what you need in this season of life. Like if God doesn't do it, I don't think it's gonna happen. Like you need mighty God to be working in your life. Maybe that's what you need. The next phrase is everlasting father. Some of us had great experience with our dads. I did, I do. He's still with us and so I'm thankful for that. But maybe you had a dad that, it wasn't, didn't work out so well. And I'll just give you a hint. My kids can tell you this for sure. Dads aren't perfect. But our everlasting father is. We have a heavenly father that is perfect and he's good and everlasting. He'll always be that. If we let him fulfill that first purpose of his, you'll call him Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. Maybe you just need a parent, an everlasting father to love you and lead you and provide for you well. I've got good news. That's, that's one of the purposes Jesus showed up to be. That's what we're supposed to call him, his nickname. Not because it rhymes with something, because that's what he does. That's who he is. And then this last one, Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, 
plays lots of roles in the kingdom, and one of them is a prince, the prince of peace. Maybe you struggle with anxiety. I do. Maybe there's a lot of things in life right now causing anxiety and stress. Maybe there's not a lot of peace in the world around you or just in your inner world. And Jesus shows up on purpose as the Prince of Peace to bring peace to you, peace that goes beyond understanding. And sometimes when we say we want, we want peace, what we're really saying is we want things to settle down. And what Jesus says is I can bring peace even if things don't settle down. Again, only God could do this. And thankfully, he does. So let me ask you again, like if you are thinking about which one of these four you need most right now in your life, I need a a wonderful counselor because I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make sense of it. I need a mighty God to show up and do something that only God can do. Maybe you need, I need an everlasting father, someone to parent me, love me, and lead me well. That's who I need God to be, Jesus to be right now. Or maybe it's Prince of Peace. I need Jesus to show up to be my Prince of Peace because my world is full of fear and chaos and anxiety. Which one, think about it for a minute. Don't answer it loud, but think, which one do you need most right now? And the good news is, he can do that. That's who he is. That's his purpose. The better news is you don't have to choose just one. He's all of that. All of these nicknames, forgiving of sins, God with us, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. This is all who he is and it's all what he does. That's his purpose. Your purpose is to let him, to lean into that. Because Jesus is all of who he says he is. So again, this is the main theme that Jesus showed up on purpose. This was not random. What we celebrate at Christmas was not random. It was purposeful. It was planned. And God with us shows us that we matter to him. He came looking for us to bring purpose. There is purpose in your life that will be brought, perhaps changed, when Jesus shows up. Mary's life changed. Joseph's life changed. The shepherd's life changed. Imagine, like it it impacted them on different levels. It will change your purpose. Are you willing to let him do that? Because Jesus brings purpose like no one else can and nothing else can. So going back to Matthew, as Joseph wrestled with this, you give him the name Jesus because he will save people from their sins. That's his purpose. Has he done that for you? Has he forgiven you? And it's not like item by item. It's a once and for all, Jesus, I want you to come in and be my forgiver and leader, my Lord and Savior. I want you to do that for me. That's why he showed up to do. And hundreds of years ago, they predicted before that, that he would be Emmanuel, God with us, showing up on purpose to bring purpose to everyone and everything. He changes us. He changes the world around us. That's what he does. What would it look like for you to be present with God this week? In this season. What are some ways you can do Christmas on purpose this year? I encourage you to sit down. It doesn't have to be 12. Make it three. But I'll, I'll tell you, here's a, a key thing of how I do it. I make sure one is kind of private just for me. Uh, one is exclusively doing something for somebody else. And maybe some of you already did that with Operation Christmas Child boxes. Maybe you, you, you know, sign up to ring the, the bell for the Salvation Army. A lot of you do, and I really appreciate that. And if you go sign up, say, you know, there's a thing drop down, Live Oak Community Church. I think we're on there listed twice. Uh, but a lot of us do that. And it's a way to do something meaningful for others because that's what Jesus did at Christmas. He showed up to do something for others, for us. So let's do that. So find something you can do for others. Find a way to be ref- uh, something that's private that no one knows about that's just between you and God. Do something reflective. Maybe do some research on the background of Christmas carols. One of the most meaningful gifts I've already received this year, and I'm hoping it's one of many gifts I received this year, uh, I mean, from somebody here at Live Oak. By the way, somebody also gave me uh, some cranberry ginger ale. I'm a big fan of cranberry ginger ale, and I mention that because a lot of times when I mention it, people give it for me. Um, And and you don't have to do that, but I should also mention that I've always wanted to go on a Caribbean cruise. So uh, if that's what it takes, like, but where was I going with that? 
what was I saying? Uh, no, <laughs> cranberry. Oh, so one of those meaningful gifts I got this year. Somebody gave me these books that gives the background on Christmas carols. There's some rich history in there. Like, like lean into the meaning of some of these lyrics. Uh, the history of where they are. Like lean into the Christmas story and don't just read over it in a brief reading on Christmas Eve. Like, like read it and thoughtfully think, what are the implications? Philip Yancey asked this great question. When anytime you look at anything about Jesus' life, including the birth or the pre-planning involved, what does this tell me about God? Who he is and what he thinks about me. How he wants me to respond to him. What does this tell me about who God is? Read the Christmas story that way. Curious about saying, I want to know better who God is. Think about it. What are some ways you can do Christmas on purpose this year? You will have the things that get put on your agenda. It'll be full. Don't let some very meaningful, purposeful things get squeezed out. Do Christmas on purpose. Have a plan. Even if it's just, there's one thing you're going to specifically do. Do that. Do something. And then here's the key question. Of all those purposes, of being, doing Christmas on purpose, with this in mind, what will you do this Christmas season to focus on Jesus? As the pace tends to speed up and then slow down the holidays, there's a lot, of, a lot of activity and then it's kind of quiet. Like in the middle of that, how can you just take some pauses to reflect and focus on Jesus? Maybe with gratitude. Keep being gratitude. Maybe, Jesus, here's what I'm thankful for. Maybe it's uh, sharing Jesus with somebody else, sharing your faith. Maybe it's simply inviting someone to church. You know, Christmas is the easiest time to invite someone because Christmas is the one kind of Christian foothold still in the world, in parts of the world that don't really care about Jesus. Like Christmas still has a foothold. It, inviting to a Sunday during the Christmas Eve series, uh, or Christmas series or Christmas Eve services. We'll have four this year. Three in the morning that we're encouraging people to invite to, and then one at night that's real scaled down. Like, invite. What a better way to say thank you to Jesus than telling somebody about Jesus? Because his purpose is to show up for you and for them. Like, what will you do to focus on, Christmas, on Jesus this Christmas season? Like, be purposeful about it. And next week, we're going to start or continue in the series, week two. And we're going to talk about how Jesus showed up on purpose to bring purpose to everyone and everything. And we're going to look at some of these I have come statements when Jesus, because I don't know if you know this, when you read the Christmas story, there's no red letters. Like Jesus never says anything. <laughs> but again, the presence of Jesus says everything about what God thinks about us and who he is. But when Jesus started his earthly ministry, he started using these I have come statements. I have come to, I have come because about his purpose. And in the midst of these seemingly random events and characters at the birth of Jesus and in the life of Jesus and in our lives, I think we can see that in this chaotic, seemingly random events of life, God brings purpose. It's what he does. It's who he is. And I'm gonna ask, you know, God, show me how you wanna impact my purposes to become your purposes. And we're gonna lean into that each week leading up to Christmas Eve. And then and next week, after the second service, we're gonna have baptisms at 1210. I encourage you to stick around or come back and let's celebrate those who are taking their next step of making their faith public. And then I wanna say a really big thank you. Uh, our Give 2023 initiative, we did 518 Operation Christmas Child boxes, 213 hygiene bags for Lubbock Impact, and they limit the number of bags that they can store so we, we limit the number we give out. And we always know that there's someone like me that goes, oh yeah, I forgot that. And they forget to do it. And a lot of times we'll have some bags that don't get returned or boxes. This year we didn't have many unreturned bags. So we had more than we, we, we thought. So we're gonna, you know, if we need to host them or whatever, but we did more uh, than we really planned on those. And then 10,000, over $10,000 given uh, to put the new roof on the, uh, mission in Piedras Negras, Mexico. So thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you so much. And yeah, that is, I'm, I'm thankful that God gives to us and we give others. When Jesus does something in our life on purpose, we reflect his purpose. So I encourage you to be, keep being generous through the Salvation Army. Ring the bell, give to the kettle, give to people in need. Be praying, God, who is it that's in need that you want me to part, be part of meeting that need? And I think that's a great way to honor Jesus. And I'm so thankful that you guys um, were so generous this, this season. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thanks that you showed up on purpose. This was not random, that you had a plan. 
When your plan could have been walking away from us because of our sin, you walked toward us, toward the mess, showed up in the middle of the mess. And when everyone thought it was random and chaotic and didn't have any purpose, you brought purpose. And you brought purpose to people's lives. God, show us your purposes of what you want to be, who you want to be in our life. And then show us how it should impact us of how we live differently. Help us to do Christmas on purpose this year, to celebrate this season and lean in and reflect. And God, help us to be generous with all things, including generous in sharing you with others. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, thanks for being here. Merry Christmas. And if you'd like, kids, show me your kids' note-taking page. I'd love to see it.